82 million years ago, most of Kansas and Colorado were submerged beneath the Western Interior Seaway. It was a shallow sea, much like today's Mediterranean, stretching from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the Arctic, covering most of what we know today as the Great Plains. In some ways similar to today's oceans, but in many ways dramatically different, the Western Interior Seaway was the most dangerous ocean the Earth has ever seen. The dominant predators in this sea, and all of the world's oceans at the time, were mosasaurs. Mosasaurs were large marine lizards adapted to living in the ocean and shared their sea with sharks which look very much like those found in today's oceans. Giant predatory fish including Zephactinus, which reached lengths of nearly 20 feet, plesiosaurs in both short neck and long neck forms, and the largest sea turtles to ever have lived including Protostega with a flipper span of more than 15 feet. Overhead, the skies were filled with giant pteranodons with large male wingspans approaching 24 feet. In this part of the world, there were three primary kinds of mosasaurs. Platycarpus was the most robust and most plentiful of mosasaurs, typically about 20 feet long. Tylosaurus was the largest, reaching 45 feet in length. The largest tylosaur in the world is displayed just 20 feet from where you are sitting right now. Cladastes was the smallest of the three, and it had a slightly different body plan, probably was a surface dweller, while Platycarpus and Tylosaurus went deep diving for their food. Here, a human skeleton is shown for scale, although we weren't around during the reign of the Mosasaurs. All three of these Mosasaurs are on display and new specimens are being prepared in the lab here at the RMDRC. Look closely at a Mosasaur skull and you will see an extra set of teeth in the palate. These are called pterygoid teeth. You can see them under the orbit in this beautiful line drawing of a Cladastes skull. When the animals died, the soft and easily disturbed chalk preserved many of those carcasses that settled to the sea floor. Eventually, mountain building to the west caused the continent to rise and the sea disappeared. The entombed skeletons began to erode away and that's why we find mosasaur skeletons in Kansas and Colorado. The chalk from this ancient seafloor, known as the Niobrara, slowly erodes away along the drainage systems of rivers and streams, exposing and eventually destroying the fossil skeletons nature has preserved. Professional collectors from the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center explore among these chalk outcrops to find and collect the skeletons that will be prepared, molded, and cast in our lab. And we don't always get where we're going. Traveling across some rugged terrain without roads has its hazards. And sometimes we even find the rarest of fossils in the smallest of chalk outcrops. Dr. Dursler found a rare toothed diving bird known as Hesperornis in this tiny outcropping of chalk. If you have ever wondered how we get these wonderful fossil animals from the ground to the displays, here's how we do it. This is the field crew working on a mosasaur skeleton. Once a skeleton is found and the decision made to collect it, the rock above it is removed by a variety of methods, including picks, shovels, jackhammers, and sometimes larger equipment. The closer to the bone layer we get, the smaller the tools we use. The perimeter of the skeleton is found by partially exposing some of the bones using trowels, dental tools, exacto knives, and brushes, but the bones are left in the rock. Specialized glues are put over the exposed bone to penetrate and preserve them. Once the perimeter is clearly defined, a chainsaw with a special blade is used to score the area around the fossil and portions of rock not containing any fossils are removed.
Aluminum foil is then placed over any exposed bone. The slabs of rock containing the fossilized bones of the animal are jacketed with plaster and burlap bandages wrapped tightly around the rock and then the plaster is given time to cure. Once the plaster and burlap jacket hardens, the jacket is carefully flipped over for transport back to Woodland Park. In the lab, the bones are carefully prepared using hand tools, dental picks, microblasters, and scribes. Additional glues are applied, and in most cases, the individual bones are removed completely from the rock. The best skeletons are molded and cast so that multiple copies can be made. This complicated process uses silicone rubber and advanced molding techniques. Once the molds are made, copies of the skeletons restored here are acquired by museums and universities across the globe. Whether you are visiting the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History, the Humboldt Museum in Berlin, or the National Science Museum in Tokyo, our work is on display. In fact, we have supplied nearly 150 museums around the world with both cast or original skeletons that were assembled right here at the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center. Thank you for visiting us. Tell your friends about us. And if you have any questions, our visitor experience guides are available to help you.